According to the Paris Agreement, we need to reach net zero emissions by mid-century to avoid catastrophic climate change. One way to translate from this requirement to corporate transformational climate action is to set targets aligned to current climate science. Science-based targets provide you with a clearly defined pathway that specifies how much and how quickly you need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Hi, I'm Barbara Albert, co-CEO of 100% Renewables, a consultancy specialized in the development of net zero strategies. In previous videos on science-based targets, I talked about what they are, target setting approaches and what you should consider when setting a science-based target. In this video, I'm answering commonly asked questions for developing a science-based target for your scope 3 emissions. First question, do we have to set a science-based target for our scope 3 emissions? According to the Science-Based Target Initiative, you only need to set a science-based target for your Scope 3 emissions if they are larger than 40% of your overall carbon footprint. Second question. Does a Scope 3 science-based target need to cover all Scope 3 emissions? Your Scope 3 target boundary should collectively cover at least two-thirds of your total Scope 3 emissions. Third question. Does our Scope 3 science-based target have to be absolute-based or can it be intensity-based? Your Scope 3 target can be absolute, intensity or engagement-based. Absolute-based means that you have to achieve emissions reduction from a certain baseline by a target year. Here's an example of an absolute-based reduction target for a Scope 3 emission source. Siemens AG commits to reduce absolute scope 3 greenhouse gas emissions 15% by 2030 from a 2019 base year. Intensity based means that you have to achieve emissions reduction based on a metric such as unit of production uh, e.g. tons if you are a manufacturer. Here is an example of an intensity based reduction target for a scope 3 emissions source. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions per tonne of product by 30% by 2030 from a 2017 base year. Engagement-based means that you are engaging your value chain partners in setting science-based targets, meaning that you are requesting your suppliers to set their own science-based targets. Suppliers or engagement targets may be valuable if you have yet to identify levers for more specific reduction opportunities amongst your value chain partners or if you have mostly indirect expenditure and therefore don't spend enough on individual suppliers to support collaborative reduction efforts. It's best not to use supply engagement targets when the majority of emissions from purchased products and services come from tier 2 suppliers or suppliers even further removed from you as you may not be able to influence emissions reduction. Here is an example of a supply engagement target. Fisher & Paykel Healthcare Corporation Limited commits that 87% of suppliers by spend covering purchased goods and services and the use of sold products will have science-based targets by FY 2024. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.